All right, so um, I'm going to talk about book reading. I have some ideas on it. I chose Philippians 4 8 as the key verse. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Maybe we could also say, read such things. So whatever is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, or praiseworthy. I think that's also true of movies that we watch, music that we listen to. That's why I don't like horror movies. I don't need um, a lot of fearsome and fearful images uh, planted in my mind. So think about things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, or praiseworthy. So why should we read books? Well, there are probably many good reasons to read books. I just thought about a few. Reading books is good for our minds, to keep our minds fed and active and thinking and working and growing. It's exercising our minds, just like we exercise our bodies. We need to exercise our minds, stretch them, um, exercise that muscle in the brain for good creativity and broadening our understanding of the world and of people and of ourselves and of God. Um, learning inspiring, we can learn a lot of inspiring stories or good examples or illustrations through reading. But what should we read? Well, there are a lot of good things to read but I think it's good to consider when we're choosing what to read or thinking about what to read, what is our aim or goal personally? What are we, what are we struggling with or <clears throat> wanting to expand our understanding or thinking of? And how the, how the reading can help in our own lives or ministries. And I think we want to learn from good, committed, fruitful or influential Christians. Um, good source, I think, to draw from. Reputable, well-known, perhaps authors. So there's a UBF reading list that we started. It has 120 titles by 30 UBF coworkers who recommended in these various categories. We tried to categorize their books that they recommended in these kinds of categories, apologetics and worldview, biographies or great Christians, Christian co or church community, Christian life, church history, discipleship, manhood, spirituality, evangelism, gospel and Bible, Holy Spirit, leadership, marriage and relationships, parenting, pastoring, prayer, preaching, spiritual formation, spiritual warfare, theology and world mission. So if you want a copy of this list, we're, we, we're, ma we're making this list available to all our forum members today. And it's a partial list, it's incomplete. It's just 30 people's uh, opinion on what they've read that's been helpful for them. I'm sure you all have helpful books that you've read. Uh, one that stands out to me, probably talk about it later, let's see if it's here, is uh, The Five Love Languages. I'll mention that later, I think. Author, who's the author? That's important when we're reading. We have to consider the author's worldview, philosophy, and background, and theology. Uh, we shouldn't just read anything. And we need to beware of unorthodox or heretical authors that teach things that are contrary to the uh, sound Bible doctrine. Of course, you know, the Watchtower Society is Jehovah Witnesses. Um, they even have their own version of the Bible called the New World Translation. So if you get a hold of that translation, just throw it in the garbage. It's not, um, it's not sound and it's not um, scholarly. It's according to their own. For example, John 1.1 1, 1 is in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was a God. That's just bad uh, translation uh, because they don't accept Jesus as God. 
and they don't accept the Trinity. Mary Baker Eddy, she's the founder of Christian Science, which is really weird if you get a hold of her book, um, Science of Mind and Health. Very strange, very um, abstract, um, and a lot of strange teachings there they have about death and illness not being real. Uh, I, I don't. I wouldn't recommend reading Joel Osteen's um, "Your Best Life Now." Um, I don't like his preaching. I don't think it's it's gospel centered. Um, there's no take up your cross. There's no repentance. Jesus Seminar wrote the fifth gospel. I think they called it. The, they were skeptics, kind of. Um, the theological skeptics about the Bible say most of the Bible is not really what Jesus said. The only thing he really said was our father in heaven. And that's about it. I remember skimming through that one. Um, and other non-Christian writers you need to be beware of. So we're not influenced off the gospel track. Um, if, if, you, uh, if you're trying to understand where somebody's coming from, that might be helpful. But in the past, I, as a young believer, I thought if I'm going to read anything from a non-Christian author, I need to read as many chapters of the Bible <laughs> or um, something by a Christian author. Biographies or autobiographies can be very encouraging and inspiring to learn of the struggles that famous people have gone through, many from very ordinary upbringings. Uh, let's see, I think I just went backward. Uh, we can read books to understand, get a better understanding of ourselves or other people. Apologetics can be very helpful for this. For example, if you want to minister to Muslims or you have a Muslim Bible student, um, Aline, Aline Tapia just was in my office yesterday and saw a Muslim evangelism book, and she has a Muslim Bible student. So she said, hey, can I borrow that book? That's a good way to read books is borrow, borrow from somebody. I'll talk about that later. For example, uh, Nabil Qureshi was a convert from uh, Islam to Christianity, and he wrote a book called Seeking Allah and Finding Jesus. That could be very helpful for to understand where Muslims are coming from or how to help um, a Muslim Bible student. And uh, if, if, there, if you need to grow, if you're having struggles or difficulties in your marriage or in a relationship, or you know someone who is, could read a book on that. I found, uh, here it is, The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman, very mind-opening for me when I read it more than 10 years ago. Um, just understanding that people are different. They have um, different love languages, what, what speaks powerfully to them. He put, you know, five categories of love, and my wife's is quality time, and mine is acts of service. So sometimes we, we don't speak on the same plane or think on the same plane. We're we're thinking we're loving each other the best we can, but it's not connecting sometimes with others. So gifts and words of affirmation uh, are other love languages. And I forgot the final one, oh, physical touch. Or it might be an area of struggle for yourself or confusion for yourself or from, for, for somebody that you know, one of your Bible students or one of your children one of your relatives, um, just what's going on in the world. It's a huge topic right now, the transgender movement. I've been following articles for Leah Thomas, the man who transgendered to be a woman and is breaking all kinds of swimming records. Um, this is a big controversy right now in the United States about this um, man who, who now identifies as a woman, but he went through male puberty, so he's he's got a great advantage over the average woman. That's that's a big issue right now. Uh, war, of course, is hot in the news with Ukraine right now. I started reading a a, a Catholic uh, from a Jesuit perspective, and I I realized wow, they're very thoughtful and um, based on the Bible as well. It's called America Media, so I. I've been reading some helpful articles on the war in Ukraine. Um, of course, it's again, that's from a Catholic perspective, so not 
it's Christian, but not um, Protestant. And then uh, again, marriage or, or parenting books. Uh, conflict resolution could be a good thing to, to read up on if that's an area. So how can we read? We can read books either by ourselves or with someone. Uh, my wife and I were reading um, two different books, Christian books with our son, Paul, um, during the pandemic. You can get online and read uh, a chapter of the Bible and talk about it or with your spouse or um, with a friend, Christian friend or Bible student, or you can join a book club. Um, we actually have a book club in Chicago UVF. I'm not part of it, but I know Christian Miserac is and a few others, maybe about five or 10 people that they choose a book and go through it and discuss it. So you could form a book club in your ministry if you have enough people interested in that. And when, it, when I have a book in my hand, I, I start by reading the back cover about the book and the, about the author, and then look at the table of contents. Um, you can look at the copy, copyright information too, and the forward, the introduction, and you can skim the book, skim the chapters, get an overview of the book to start. Um, let me switch now to my other notes here. Give me a second. Wish I could, here we go. I'm gonna make this bigger. I'd be picking up from right here. So how can we get books to read? Um, you can buy them online through Amazon or christianbook.com, for example. Maybe uh, if you have a good, a good source of getting books, you can put that in the chat. If you have a different way that you know of. Those are the sources that I, I typically use. The public library can have some books. Uh, if you have a church library, or you could start a church library, borrow from friends or lend your books to friends like I did yesterday. Uh, Christian Nizrak uses third apps, phone apps and stuff. Hoopla. Hoopla is connected to 2,600 libraries in the USA. I don't know if that extends into Canada, maybe not. That would be from a USA perspective. You can get books for free or audio books for free through Hoopla. And when and where to read books. Time management is always a challenge in our busy society. When can we make time to read? That's the big question. And I found audiobooks can be helpful if, if you listen to books while you're driving or exercising or walking the dog or uh, doing some house chores that don't require much concentration like washing the dishes, laundry, painting. Audiobooks can be purchased at audible.com or some audiobooks can be loaned from libraries. There's some free apps for certain books. Kindle is another way you can read even while exercising, like on a, a stationary bike or an elliptical machine. I find it hard to read on a treadmill because you're bouncing up and down, but I can do it on an elliptical. Wherever you're waiting or just sitting, like on a plane, train, or bus, or in, in an Uber, you can, when you're waiting in long lines or, or waiting on the phone, being like you made a call to AT&T and you're waiting for them to get back to you. Sometimes that can be a 15 minute wait. Um, replace, uh, my wife suggested yesterday, replacing movies with reading books. Instead of movie watching or internet surfing, you can use that time either at, you know, at night if you do that with a reading light. Uh, as an aside here, actually about movies, there's some good Christian movies, I think, that are worthwhile. And I put a bunch here that I think um, have helped me and inspired and encouraged me. The Chosen series, or movies like Courageous, War Room, Fireproof, Breakthrough, Heaven is for Real. I can only imagine, I still believe. So Christian movies. Uh, you can also enroll in a class. 
like um, in a seminary. And if you don't want to pay the money or get the credit, you could just audit it. It's a lot cheaper to audit a class. You might have to first get accepted into that seminary, or you could do it through UBF headquarters online courses. Those are free, currently free. Um, and there's a limited enrollment, about 15 students for each class right now. Preaching is going on and spiritual warfare. That can help you to, to keep learning and reading. Community college, you could also um, take a class at a community college or a community center, a mini course. You have many courses. And who should read? I think everybody who can read or who can listen to a book, we start reading to our children when they're little, they can hear and learn and listen. So everybody, um, basically you need to make time for it is the challenge. Um, one thing is you could make a goal to read one book a month, try to stick to that, or even better, have an accountability partner to go through a book with you that can be helpful. That's my short talk on book reading. I'm sure if you have any suggestions on any of these things I've mentioned, put it in the chat for anybody else. If you have also suggestions of great books that have helped you or moved you, you can put that in the chat as well or send an email to Augustine Saw or Ezra Cho and we, uh, we can add it to the book list. I think those are the main things that I wanted to cover, thanks.